And Donald Trump is a proven liar. He's been found liable by a jury of his peers for sexual assault, is currently facing 91 charges in four criminal indictments, and yet, as Vanity Fair's Molly Jong Fast points out in her latest piece, the media treats him and his bombastic statements with an unearned objectivity instead of the threat to democracy that Trump poses. It's having a terrible effect on the state of reality in American politics. Do you need a reminder? Well, buckle up. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke? I don't know anything about David Duke. I mean, I'm just talking about David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan here, but... I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. You just see him thrown in, rough. I said, please don't be too nice. Very fine people on both sides. Probably Proud boys, side. stand back and stand by. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. We will root out the communists, Marxist, fascist, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country. Don't believe the crap you see from these people, the fake news. What you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. Joining me now is Vanity Fair special correspondent and host of the Fast Politics podcast, Molly Jong Fast. Molly, you know, I hate putting Donald Trump on air in that way, but I wanted to make sure that our viewers heard. You know, that sought mashup, all of that mm. sound from Donald Trump, that goes back to 2016. Yeah. 2016, seven yeah. years ago. And in your piece, something that really kind of stuck with me is you said, when one candidate makes a claim, the other disputes it. Two sides are divided, but the framing only works if both parties operate within the frameworks of a shared reality. Mm -hmm. Trumpism doesn't allow for the reality the rest of us inhabit. Trump supporters believe their leader's reality and not, say, the reality the rest of us see with our eyes. Yeah. It's really powerful because it's true. You're, we're lending credibility to Donald Trump when he doesn't have any. Right, and he doesn't deserve it also. And it gets worse. That schism grows every time you see a Republican uh, endorse it. So, for example, last week you had Elise Stefanik go on Meet the Press and say that the um, the January 6th criminals were hostages. And that was a way in which she endorsed Trump's lies. And that was really dangerous because now there's a sense that these people who actually did crimes and are actually in jail um, are now somehow not guilty, that they are, in fact, hostages, and we know they are not. And so every time these Republicans go along with this, with this uh, Earth-2 world that Trump created, uh, it grows the schism Republicans uh, in the party feel between what's real and what their, what their guy, Donald Trump, tells them is real grows. So putting aside the fact, though, that Republican Congress people, for example, are just paying homage and allegiance to their right. supreme leader, you also had in your piece some really very telling examples of how media has failed as right. well. This idea that headlines include stuff like one attack, two interpretations, right. Biden and Trump make both the January 6th not a political rallying cry, and perhaps the most offensive, as you called it, was from USA Today, Biden and Trump's split over January 6th is as divisive as it is for voters. I mean, media also continues to have a responsibility to make sure that we don't both sides autocracy, right? Yes, for sure. I mean, look, I I'm on the opinion side, so for me, it's a lot easier. Yeah, I can just it's give my opinion. opinion. Side, yeah. It's very hard as a straight reporter who is meant to appear nonpartisan to cover something like this. And that is why these straight reporters need to be, and Margaret Sullivan talks about this a lot, pro-democracy. They need to focus on democratic norms, right, and to explain when one candidate is flouting those norms. And that's what we see with Donald Trump. I mean, you know, when I was watching those clip, that clip reel, I was thinking about all of the institutions that Donald Trump has attacked and degraded, right, from the mainstream media to academic, to, you know, universities, to voting mm -hmm. itself, right? I mean, the man has, ha, ha, you know, he's declared open season on democracy. So I do think it's really, really important for us to, to explain when things are not normal. And, for example, 
to think of January 6th as to having two interpretations. No, there are not two interpretations. There's one interpretation, which is what happened. And the legal system has shown that, right? They didn't think there were two interpretations. And I do think the way we got here was Trump was so enabled by Republicans who were desperate for power and for also by other people who didn't want to get in trouble, didn't want the death threats, didn't want... The, you know, you go against Trump, it's very... You know, as you and I both know, you get a lot of pushback in very scary ways. We but, know. right, but I think it's really important that that's how we got here. And he's gotten away with so many things. And the one place where he's not getting away with it, though he is to some extent, is the legal system. Well, cowardice can be seen and exhibited in different ways. Mm -hmm. Cowardice can be acquiescence. Cowardice can be obsequiousness. It can mm -hmm. be, I'm not going to say anything and I'm not going to speak up. Cowardice can also be, I'm going to back that dictator or that autocrat mm -hmm. because I'm scared that my own hide is on the line if I fail to do so. You know, Nick Ackerman was on just right before you. And there is this case that I was talking to him about which is the civil immunity for presidents, right. Nixon versus Fitzgerald. But in the Supreme Court you know, opinion, it talks about um, kind of just safeguards. You right. know, the idea of fear of not being able to be reelected. That's included in that opinion. The idea that Congress actually would keep a bad president in check through impeachment and other right. means. Is that mean then that's gone? We can't count on Congress. We can't count on the media. We can't right. count on the public. So now it's just the last battleground for democracy is going to be the courtroom. Well, that and I think it's really important to go back to this idea, because for such a long time, Trump's people have said, well, Congress is supposed to keep him in check. And then you had these Republicans and they were too cowardly to vote to convict with that second impeachment right after January 6th. Everybody knew, even Mitch McConnell was on the floor saying this is not okay. Kevin McCarthy. Yes. Yes. And then, and they didn't vote to convict because they didn't want the death threats. They didn't want the scary phone calls. They didn't want it. And they felt like maybe he would go away. And I think that really maybe he would go away has been the really the sort of the worst thing that anyone has assumed because Trump is not going away. And we see that now, right? He's running again, and he is the Republican frontrunner. So uh, I hope that there will be more bravery, but I'm not banking on it. And in the absence of that bravery, then we hope, as I read through your piece, that we do not both sides any yes. of the lies. We don't both sides any of his positions that are clearly untenable. Yeah, it's tr Donald Trump is not business as usual, and you can't cover him that way.